Okay, we're back, and in this video we are going to look at bodies in a little bit more detail. We're going to see how to create new bodies and set up their properties, and also we'll have a look at duplicating and copying and pasting bodies. So I'm going to start with this um, document A that we had from one of the earlier videos, and you might like to follow along with this it won't be too complicated. Um, so <coughs> right, so we're going to be adding things and the way we add new things or and in fact the way we do all kinds of things in Rube is this thing called the action menu which we haven't really looked at yet uh, but the action menu can be found right down here at the bottom of the scene menu but most of the time the way we access it is just by hitting the spacebar in an editor view like this. So wherever the mouse is, when you hit spacebar, um, this action menu will show up. And for this video, we're going to be just looking at the top uh, one here in the menu, add, add body, and then we have a few things that we can choose for which type of body that we want to add. So you can set up um, your own entries in this action menu and we'll look at that in one of the later videos. But for now we'll just go with the standard add body with something something that we have available here. So <coughs> all of these options here are going to add the body at the cursor location. So we'll hit C and we'll uh, move the cursor somewhere. I'll put it there and then we're going to add a body here and so we hit spacebar and then add body and you can actually add a body with no fixtures which will give you just this gray uh, thingy like this the body nub marker to show you where the body is and that can actually be useful sometimes um, if you want to have a static body that acts as a base for joints as like a ground body but it doesn't actually have any any joints uh, any fixtures on it that can actually be useful sometimes um, but I'm just gonna get rid of that one because it's not very fun to look at so we'll go with something we'll just take a look at what we have here so we have add body with circle fixture this will give you one of those and I'll just move the cursor along a little bit here the default size for these by the way is a diameter of one unit. Uh, so if you can hopefully you can see in the video that you're watching that we have these small dotted green lines here to show uh, units of one physics unit in the physics world. So there will be diameter of one and moving on to the next but body type we'll have a square fixture and this will also be placed at the cursor position and it's also dimensions of one, one by one. Okay, moving on a bit, we have add body with um, an n-sided polygon fixture. So what this does is when we choose this, we can actually enter a number for the uh, number of sides that we want. We'll just go with five. And this is created so that it has also a diameter of one or more correctly I guess it has a radius of 0 0.5 and the first point that's created will always be at the east position from the cursor so you'll always find one point exactly horizontally 0 0.5 units away from the cursor position and they go around like this okay and the last one we have is uh, edge I think yep edge fixture and this will create um, an edge. So this is just a two vertex fixture and um, so that's that's the basic body types that we can create and to set the properties for each of these we'll need to select them so we can say select this one and then in the properties window we can change the properties to whatever we need to use there um, and this is just basic box 2D knowledge here. Uh, it's not really anything to do with the editor specifically so I'm not going to cover these in detail. Uh, you can 
use the mouse to just hold the mouse over here and get a little bit of information about what these are if you've forgotten or if you're too lazy to look up the Box City <laughs> manual or whatever uh, you can maybe get some useful information from here and of course there is a, a excellent site called iForce2D net which has some great tutorials about using Box City so I'll let you look up those if you need to know specific information um, and the colors here are just um, a rough sort of a division between properties that don't change over the course of the simulation so when we run the physics simulation these things here they don't change the gravity scale uh, so well active can change but um, things that change on a time step to time step basis so usually every time step you'll find some properties can change so that's the ones that I've marked with the uh, red pink kind of color here so these properties are I guess you could say they're more dynamic than the other properties so that's the only meaning that these colors have it's not not really too important okay uh, and of course um, to change the type of the bodies I guess we should just quickly look at that because that's pretty common requirement uh, the most fundamental aspect of a body is the type and if you click in here you can find a pull down list or a pull up list or whatever you call these things a combo box and you can change that to be static or let's see kinematic so now we can change the body types of these and when we run it we'll see that these bodies are static and kinematic bodies okay um, now a <coughs> couple of points to note about bodies we we looked at the last video how to move bodies um, so we just move them around with the T rotate with R and scale with S and we can mirror them by scaling and restricting to either uh, the x-axis like this or the y-axis like that oh, let's try like that we can mirror things across the y-axis and the x-axis um, and we also pointed out I'm just going over this just in case you didn't see the last video uh, when you have joints attached to bodies the joints will also be mirrored and scaled with them and of course translated with them so uh, in this video we also wanted to look at duplicating and copying and pasting bodies so let's pick on this body here A and we'll duplicate this body and the way that we do that is by hitting shift D for duplicate and what that does is it creates a duplicate of the selected bodies just that one at the moment and it starts this translation mode that we normally do so by hitting T we start translating right so when we hit shift D we'll start translating a duplicate so I just hit shift D now and now I can translate this duplicate and I can do the usual things like restricting to an axis or using shift to move it slower and things and so on and then of course when I use the left mouse button the duplicate will be moved to that uh, new position so that's shift D for duplicate and one thing to be careful of when you're doing that is if I just undo this I will notice I had to hit undo twice to undo that <coughs> and the reason for that is because it's actually two operations so if I do that one more time I select my body A here now I hit shift D the body has already been duplicated so that's one operation that has an undo and then when, it, when I move it and place it that's another operation that has an undo so I'm actually already in the second operation at this point so if I hit escape to cancel it the body that we duplicated is still there so there's two bodies here at this point and that can be a little bit confusing so if I 
select like this now, we can actually see that we have two bodies selected. So that's just one thing to be careful of if you are duplicating things but you don't move them immediately. Uh, you can have them exactly on top of each other like that and it's a little bit hard to spot. And as I mentioned, to undo that now we have to do two undos. And you can see the color of the bodies. I'll just redo that. <laughs> when I redo and undo, you can see the opacity of the body there changing a little bit. Like this. So uh, it is a little bit tricky sometimes, but after a while, hopefully, you'll be in tune with these visual cues that will tell you when you've got two bodies on top of each other. You can see uh, that the color is of them is a little bit darker and so on. Okay, um, and just one th one more thing um, to think about when we oh yes joints sorry two more things to think about uh, when we have joints in here and we'll look at joints a little bit more in, in a future video but just for now let's take this body and I'll bring this body so that the corner overlaps this um, A piece here and we'll put the cursor there so that this is where I'm going to create a joint and don't worry too much about this Oh, we have to select two bodies to make a joint we'll, we'll cover this more in a future video don't worry and I'll put a revolute joint there and I will also make this body A static, just so that we can see exactly what's going on with this. Um, Alright, so now when we run this, we will see that we have a joint in that position. And this is all set up so that we can see what happens when we duplicate these bodies and this is a little bit tricky to explain so how am I going to do this note that this joint is connected to both of these bodies here body A which is the big one and body B which is the little small one so if we select both of these bodies and duplicate so I'm using shift D to duplicate and then I move them over here and place it. What happened there was we actually copied the joints that were attached them to these bodies as well. So if I move into joints mode we'll see we have a joint here that has been replicate, replicated and there's the original. So if we run this we get a perfect copy of both of those joints as well. Let me just close that. Um, okay, so I'll undo that. Now, suppose we only copied one of these bodies. So I'll just select body A only, and I'll duplicate that and bring it over here. What happens in this case is that any joints that were part of or connected to the bodies that were duplicated those joints will be duplicated as well but because the other side of the joint the smaller body here this was not copied so what we get in this case if we look at the joints we'll find we have the original joint here and then we have the joint that we duplicated and they are both joined to this body that did not get copied so this is a little little bit tricky but what happens when we try and run this now is we can just grab this for a second nope. well you can see that we have a, a huge conflict here because both of these revolute joints are trying to constrain this smaller body into uh, being at the corner of the, each of their respective A's here and that doesn't work too well so sometimes this can be what you want for example um, if you're making a hanging sign that has two joints uh, connected to the same body you can duplicate that and then 
move the, the joint anchors pretty easily. Or for example if we had, let's say, it might actually make sense to do something like this. Uh, let's see, we could put one corner on there and one corner on there. This might actually work. Oops, bodies, move that a little bit closer. This might work, okay. Not not really that great, but if this was a distance joint and we're having a, a sort of a hanging signpost thing here like this, uh, that might be just what we wanted. But the point is that when you copy bodies that have joints attached, those joints will be duplicated as well. All right, so that's uh, duplication with Shift D. And we can also do a more typical copy, copy and paste kind of operation. But copying and pasting is more usually done between two documents because uh, let's just undo a whole bunch of that stuff. Um, how many bodies do we have here now? One. Okay, so we're back to back to where we started. Um, so let's say we want to copy and paste this A. The way that copying and pasting works is when you do Control C and Control V to copy and paste. Um, you may have seen the color change a little bit here. That's because now we have two bodies on top of each other again. So when you paste a body into the same document, it goes into the document at exactly the same position because it needs to use the same all the same uh, properties here that we have. So the position, angle, all of these things will be the same. So it ends up being exactly on top of the one we had before. And in effect, what you have is something that's less useful than just doing a Shift D to copy those bodies to begin with. So if I undo this, it's actually more useful to do a Shift D because it's more obvious what's going on here and we can move this body straight away. Oops, uh, get rid of that. So let's open another document and I'll just open a, an empty document here, empty world, and I'll uh, tile these tile these views. Okay, so now we have an empty world and I will control C over here then I'll come into the window on the right and control V so we see that it's taken the same position that it was at in this world or in this scene and it's a bit above the origin point here so this is a more useful application of copying and pasting of bodies and as for duplicating the same things apply when you are using uh, bodies that have joints attached to them so I guess we're going to have to do this again, aren't we? Let's put this joint back on where we had it. Oops, body A, body B. Um, check that. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so we have a joint again. And I'll just undo over here. Now this time, when we copy both of these bodies, and copy, and come over here, and paste, then we will see that it's been copied with the joint as we might expect and the only slight difference if I just undo that in this case when we copy only one body that had the joint attached here so I copy and paste in this case it's a little bit different because now in this scene on the right the body that was the other side of this joint here doesn't actually exist in this right hand side scene at all so there's no other body for that joint to join to so it doesn't exist if I hit J here nothing to see because there's no joints in this right hand side so there are a few little tricky things like that um, to just keep in mind when you're duplicating and copying and pasting bodies Okay, we're nearly there. Um, finally, one thing that I wanted to mention here was the format that is used to store 
the copy paste information. So when we okay, I'll just get rid of this. This is going to be confusing. Undo this stuff. All right, now we're back here. We have one body selected, and we copy the body. And you can check under the edit menu to see. Uh, you can see under the control V, the paste menu, what's going to happen when you use paste. So we have one body paste uh, ready to paste. That means we have one body in the clipboard. And the clipboard for Rube is actually just plain text. So if we look at a text editor, and if I paste in here now, we can see that the clipboard is storing plain text JSON representation of this A body that we have with all this angular velocity and stuff. Um, so we can actually use this um, not that you would really want to in most cases but you can actually edit this JSON and say that the angle is uh, let's say one radian and then you can actually copy this again now this text becomes on the clipboard right so if we come back here each time this menu is opened it checks what's on the clipboard to see what kind of information we have so if I come back into my scene now and I paste uh, the data that we just had here which I changed the angle for we can actually paste something different and of course if I select just part of this that doesn't make any sense I mean it doesn't pass as JSON correctly and I copy that we'll see here that now there's nothing to paste because the text that we have on the clipboard doesn't make sense as an object for this program so um, although it's probably not too common it is actually possible to edit this plain text here and do some uh, make some changes yourself like that or you could even you know save this as a file if you wanted to use it uh, later on for some reason and I think in future versions of the program I may actually make it possible to drag and drop files that have in this case we have a, a body or a meta body is the format that these clipboard data uses uh, future versions of the program may actually make it possible to drag and drop the contents of a file like, like this into the program to add bodies to the scene Possibly, it's just uh, one one thing that uh, might be a good idea in future. Okay, so that is going to do it for editing bodies. And I'll see you in the next video.